Hello everyone, and welcome back to Translation Born, the show where we talk about the translation of Bloodborne. And we're not going to waste any time today, we're just going to run up these stairs and talk to Gehrman now that the blood-starved beast is dead. The healing church and the blood ministers who belong to it were once guardians of the hunters in the times of the hunter Ludwig. They worked and forged weapons in their unique workshop. Today, most ministers don't recall the hunters, but they have much to offer you. And so, heed the message of your forebears. Ascend to Erden Chapel. Sorry, could you repeat that? Ascend to Erden Chapel. From there, you will find the church workshop. Okay, thanks for the cryptic Ascend advice, I guess. But anyway, Erden in all seriousness, Chapel. there are some very interesting translation From choices there. that are happening in this dialogue. You so let's go ahead and run through that information workshop. again. This time, I'll be reading out a more literal translation with the official version on the screen. The Healing Church, or the Blood Healers, who are now called that, have also been the protectors of the Hunters since the old Hunter Ludwig. They had their own workshop and forged weapons. It seems that most of them have forgotten the Hunters, but that can still be of use to a Hunter. So allow me to pass on the last will of your forebears to you as well. Ascend Erden Chapel. Ascend Erden Chapel. The church's workshop should be at its end. So clearly, there's a lot to focus on there. But the one thing about that translation that stands out the most to me comes at the end of German's first set of dialogue. It's the line where he says, Ascend to Erden Chapel. And I'm going to risk being a little technical here because honestly this particular translation choice baffles me. So bear with me for a little bit on this one. One of the ways the Japanese language works is by using parts of speech that in English we call particles. Particles work in different ways, but generally they're there to help provide linguistic contextual information. Perhaps one of the most basic and easy to grasp particles there is, is the sentence ending ka. If you end a typical Japanese sentence with the particle ka, chances are you're using it kind of like a verbal question mark. It indicates that you're asking a question. For example, if I say, John wa pizza ga suki desu, I'm making a statement and I'm saying, John likes pizza. But if I say, John wa pizza ga suki desu ka, I'm asking a question, does John like pizza? So the particle ka can be used to indicate a question. Another common particle is, o. And most commonly, that particle is used to identify the direct object of a sentence. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the original Japanese that's been translated as Ascend to Erden Chapel. It's actually fairly straightforward. It's Odon Kyokai o Nobori Tamae. And you can see the particle O right in the center there. The direct object being identified then is Odon Kyokai or Erden Chapel. So a literal translation would be Ascend Erden Chapel. So the question is, why is it Ascend to Erden Chapel? There are other particles to indicate direction that are not being used here. Also, just based on game context, this elevator seems to be what Gehrman is referring to, and the building that it's in is Erden Chapel. That makes sense if the command is Ascend Erden Chapel, but when I hear Ascend to Erden Chapel, it makes me think we need to go from the tomb of Erden below the chapel and find something along the way to the chapel itself. But if we do that, there's nothing there. Clearly this information is important to exploring the game's world, so I don't know why they went with Ascend 2 rather than Ascend. But let's move on. To Meru Chalice. Ritual Chalice found in the Church of the Good Chalice. Use in a ritual at the tomb altar in the Hunter's Dream to break the seal of the old underground labyrinth. Let the Chalice reveal the Tomb of the Gods, let blood be the Hunter's nourishment, and let ye partake in communion. Now, this is an interesting translation for a number of reasons, but let's start with our usual comparison between the official translation and a more literal one. The literal version I'll be reading aloud, with the official version appearing on the screen. Holy Drinking Vessel of Tumuru. A ritual holy drinking vessel that was enshrined in the Church of the Holy Drinking Vessel. 
Perform a ritual at an altar tomb in the Hunter's Dream and you will likely break the seal of the underground ruins. A holy drinking vessel will reveal the tomb of the gods, and that blood will become the Hunter's nourishment. Humbly receive the holy body. And if part of that sounds familiar to you, it should. The last few lines of the item description are actually a quote of something that Gehrman told us earlier. Or at least, it would be a quote, except that in English, it doesn't quite come across as well. To see what I'm talking about, let's first take a look at the line both of the times it's appeared so far in the Japanese. The image shows the text from the item, whereas the subtitle is showing the line from Gehrman's dialogue. As you can see, the two portions of text are identical. Now let's try the same thing with the English translations. Here, unlike in the Japanese, we can see a pretty clear difference. The item description is, let the chalice reveal the tomb of the gods, let blood be the hunter's nourishment, and let ye partake in communion. The spoken line of dialogue, on the other hand, is, a holy chalice will reveal the tomb of the gods, where hunters partake in communion. Notably, even if you set the difference in phrasing aside, the phrase, let blood be the hunter's nourishment, doesn't appear at all in the dialogue version. And you may actually recall my remarking on the absence of this line back in episode 5 of Translation 1. The unfortunate result of this is that the English translation gives you a set of lines that feel like they're quoting from something, but that actually aren't quoting anything at all. In fact, I specifically remember getting this almost quote feeling my first time through the game. So it's interesting to see that the Japanese in question actually is a direct quote. But in spite of the way this ends up playing out, I do think this gives us another opportunity to take a look at the importance of context in translation. On the one hand, we're given this line in the context of a conversation. The full set of lines are, The moon is close. It will be a long hunt tonight. If the beasts loom large and threaten to crush your spirits, seek a holy chalice, as every hunter before you has. A holy chalice will reveal the tomb of the gods, where hunters partake in communion. And as a set of dialogue, that flows very naturally. If you were to simply take the translation from the context of the item description and put it exactly that way in the dialogue, you'd end up with something like this. The moon is close. It will be a long hunt tonight. If the beasts loom large and threaten to crush your spirits, seek a holy chalice, as every hunter before you has. Let the chalice reveal the tomb of the gods, let blood be the hunter's nourishment, and let ye partake in communion. And while I don't think that sounds terrible, I feel like it's noticeably different than the flow from a regular conversation. It makes Garman come off a little bit more monomaniacal and pushy, whereas he's supposed to sound informative and conversational. If I had to take a guess as to what happened here, since each one of these translations sounds pretty good to me in isolation, with the possible exception of the let blood be the hunter's nourishment line not being part of Garman's dialogue, I'd say this is probably just a case of not catching the connection. I could be wrong, of course, but I've worked on projects where this has been an issue before, and it can be surprisingly difficult to catch. But anyway, there were also a couple things I wanted to note about the item description translation here that I really enjoyed. The use of holy chalice, or alternatively just chalice, I think is a great translation of sacred drinking vessel. And both versions of the final line sound better to me than humbly receive the holy body. Again, on the whole, I feel like the translation does a great job with references to communion, and this is no exception. And finally, I feel like their English spelling for the word tumuru was well chosen. The way that it's represented in Japanese is somewhat unusual, and the English mirrors that very well. But now that I've finally managed to climb up here, let's take a look at this lore note. The sky and the cosmos are one. The choir. Now here's another example of what I think is a fantastic translation. Literally, this would be something like, Outer space is in the sky. Holy song troop. Clearly that's a lot clunkier than the official version. As far as the individual elements go, the cosmos is a lot more evocative than outer space. It also does a better job of fitting in with the genre and setting of the game. The cosmos sounds mystical and powerful, whereas outer space sounds ordinary and everyday. Also, if you take Holy Song Troop to be a reference to a church choir, that translation choice makes sense as well. And even beyond that, I think that there's a certain nebulousness to the term of the choir as an organization that is going to arouse interest in the player. On that note, I also think it's interesting that they decided to reformulate the phrase as the sky and the cosmos are one, as opposed to something like the cosmos can be found in the sky. 
It's another phrase that leans towards the mystical. It fits the setting, and it's a vague enough statement that I don't feel like it changes the meaning in any significant way. Since we just picked up a new item though, let's check out the description. Radiant Sword Hunter Badge. One of the badges crafted by the Healing Church. The Radiant Sword indicates the heirs to the will of Ludwig. These hunters, also known as Holy Blades, are what remains of an ancient line of heroes that date back to a very early age of honor and chivalry. Now, for the most part, this strikes me as a pretty straightforward translation, although I will admit to being somewhat puzzled by the last set of lines. So as we're forced to turn around at this locked door, let's go over what a more literal translation might look like here. As usual, I'll be reading my more literal version while I have the official one displayed on screen. One of the proofs of being a hunter once created by the Healing Church Workshop. This radiant sword indicates the direct heirs to the hunter Ludwig. These hunters were also known by the second name of Holy Blades, and are what remains of an era when only beast hunters were capable of becoming heroes. This was a very long time ago. Again, it's pretty clear that the final set of lines is where the biggest difference comes into play. And, as usual, when I run across something I'm not entirely sure of, my instinct is to get very technical, so bear with me for a little bit on this. Here's the sentence from the Japanese that I think is probably the most relevant one to analyze. It's what I've rendered in my rough translation as, and are what remains of an era when only beast hunters were capable of becoming heroes. Of that sentence, this is the section that is the longest. It corresponds to what I've translated as, an era when only beast hunters were capable of becoming heroes. And the way this is set up in Japanese is that a sentence is being used to modify a noun inside of the larger sentence. So let's take a closer look at that sentence within a sentence. The subject here is beast hunters. That's fairly clear. That leaves us with this section here, one of the tricky parts of the sentence. It too can be further broken down though. This portion just means hero. And this is a seldom used, somewhat archaic sounding phrase in Japanese that modifies the word that comes before it truly befitting our discovery of what appears to be the source of the hunter's dream. But back to the mysteries of the Japanese language. This is a conjugated form of tariuru, or tarieru. Taru essentially means meeting the conditions of. The auxiliary verb uru or eru means capable of. So essentially, the meaning behind this phrase as a whole is capable of meeting the criteria of a hero. Oh, and it's also in the past tense. So that sentence is modifying the noun era or age, giving us an era when hunters were capable of becoming heroes. That entire phrase is modifying the noun the remains, and we also know that the subject as a whole is coming from another sentence, with the final verb for this entire line being are. In other words, what we've now pieced together is essentially the sentence, and are what remains of an era when beast hunters were capable of becoming heroes. The final question mark, then, is what to do with this last word, yuiitsu. It means only, sole, or unique. And this is where the real ambiguity of the sentence comes into play for me. But before I get to that, I'd like to go and take a quick look at the doll set here that we just picked up. Doll hat. A discarded doll's hat, likely a spare for dress-up. A deep love for the doll can be surmised by the fine craftsmanship of this article, and the care with which it was kept. It borderlines on mania, and exudes a slight warmth. Alright, I just wanted to make sure I read that before I put on the set. We'll come back to the translations for this attire, but for now I'd like to go back to discussing the Radiant Sword Hunter Badge. As I was saying before, the real question mark for me in the key sentence here is what you do with the word yuiitsu. If you use it to modify Beast Hunter, which is what I've done in my rough translation, you wind up with and are what remains of an era when only beast hunters were capable of becoming heroes. But I can think of two other potential formulations here that would mean very different things. One of them would be, and are what remains of the only era when beast hunters were capable of becoming heroes, and the other would be, and are the only remains of an era when beast hunters were capable of becoming heroes. I suspect it's this final sense that they went with in the official translation to get the line, these hunters, also known as Holy Blades, are what remains of an ancient line of heroes that date back to a very early age of honor and chivalry. So to put this in its most basic terms, we have a somewhat confusing line in the original Japanese. Depending on which interpretation is correct, you either have a skilled, natural-sounding official translation, or one that misses some of the nuance. And one of the reasons I wanted to go into all this, besides my own difficulty understanding, is that it touches on an aspect of translation that it's easy to gloss over. 
different translators will have different levels of experience and different things they have a hard time understanding. Depending on how they deal with those difficulties, you can wind up with some very different interpretations, and it could be impossible to tell if anything is wrong just by looking at the target language a native speaker has produced. This is the sort of thing that ideally editors and or lead translators will correct, but that can also easily slip through the cracks. But let's not end on that note. Let's take another quick look at the doll set and do a translation comparison for that. Abandoned clothing made for a doll. This appears to be a spare used for dress-up. It was made with extreme attention to detail, and from what must have been a work of great care comes the sense that the former owner of the doll felt real love for it. It resembles eccentricity, and therefore this clothing is slightly warm. And there you have it. I'm going to try a little experiment with this episode, so if you have any thoughts about that translation, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, everyone.